Greetings, greetings, market rebels, and welcome to this week's macro measure combined with sector situation. Let's see if we can get that working. There it goes. Uh, let's see. It's about uh, 10 to 4 p.m. here on the East Coast. It is Friday, September. What? Well, wait, wait a second. Is it? Yeah, it is. It's Friday, September 20th. Checking my date. I thought I might have done a typo. And um, we're about to wrap up the week. It was... Uh, Kind of an interesting week, not as eventful as I think it could have been, um, but we'll get into that. Here is our trusty disclaimer. I'm Wayne, and uh, let's see, my partner Ryan was on one of those slides. Here's our trusty disclaimer, and uh, here is our trusty intellectual property rights notice, and you can see that my mouse is doing the double clicking. <clears throat> so what I'm going to try to do is to... Keep things moving. We had a really long one. Let's see if we can get the time back down. I know that the long ones uh, really do uh, cure insomnia for a lot of people. So we'll try to cut this back. But um, as always, we'll do the selective review of the prior week. The major aim of this video discussion is to keep it nuts and bolts. We're not trying to get into any super complicated stuff. We're just trying to use basic technical analysis tools and techniques that people can use in real time and not have to consult some more sophisticated and data dependent things, et cetera. Anyway, we are about to try to identify the market environment we're operating in, and we're trying to arrive at a news neutral, most likely scenario. So this is exactly what you'd expect. Barring any news that wasn't expected, what do we think is most likely to happen? The highlight, we're going to highlight bear, bullish and bearish risks over the course of time, right? Sometimes there's just more than enough, more than on one side than another. And then always set the playback speed to 2x. The most helpful points will be below and I think on the next slide. But we're just going to skip right over things. Let's make sure maybe I can get the uh, laser tool going. Let's see if that helps me. So on this one here, uh, FOMC reaction, um, I think this was pretty accurate. I mean, we said that we thought it would have the strongest say in the week's outcome. A lot of times they don't, they do a whole lot of, you never know, of course, what you're going to get treated to, but a lot of times they do a whole lot of nothing and then they react strongly. It's normally a squeeze and then we get a rollover. Um, the, the, the duration of the squeeze can be literally minutes sometimes, sometimes it's hours, sometimes days, sometimes weeks. Uh, this one seemed pretty short lived. Um, so I guess that's because the market got what it wanted, which was a 50 basis point cut from Jerome Powell, who uh, I guess indeed uh, abandoned the 2% target rate for inflation. Uh, so, so much for all that propaganda they trot out, you know, as, I don't even know why it's 2%. Why, why do we, why don't we just keep it at zero? How's that? Would that, that, that sounds, I, me, me retaining my purchasing power uh, sounds better to me than me constantly losing it, but that's just me. Anyway, um, they pretty much got what they expected. Um, and now we'll see what happens. Uh, we've got to go from there, but it really wasn't as big of a deal as it could have been. Um, I do think they cooled the market off in front of it so that some of that short-term overboughtness we were a little concerned about. I think by the time they kind of sideways their way to Wednesday afternoon, that was gone, which was good. Um, and the bop, that pop was to the bull side, obviously, but I think it may have been gamma induced from what I saw. I, I didn't really see it that 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 gap, especially since there's no follow through here today, really. Today's follow through is with only a few minutes remaining, not all that not all that impressive. So now I have to wonder, um, is the seasonality calendar we've talked about, which I'll show, going to start playing out because, it's sort of like sell on news, right, uh, at this point, in a way. So they've got their Fed news out of the way. They're all thrilled in, in theory, uh, but it, is it is it really the case? Um, we did talk about the most likely scenario again in different ways. I just felt like coming into it, the mega caps and SMH were were positioned to, to, to go to fire. And I do think the mega caps as a package, not all all in, all of them entirely, but as a package, they did go. Uh, SMH did try to go, but today's a rather disappointing reversal, right? If you're a bull. So we got some of that, I think, was, was worth seeing. 
Uh, the news was required to derail. That was one of my arguments. I didn't see major news that would derail the market. So it kept trying to work higher and did in fact make new all time highs in the spies and cues. I did say, if you see the market getting derailed uh, after the FOMC without news, that might even be a bigger problem because that me could mean something's looming or it could mean that they're about to pull off another rug pull right after they've got everyone thrilled. There was a rate cut and it was big, the big one, not 25, but 50 basis points. Now we could see problems. So we can't we can't really uh, get away from that. Um, so yeah, I think that this is the the summary, right? Everything pretty much had an issue. I would say overall the week is ending on a sour note. It's not the end of the world. I mean, it's not a disaster of a day. It's just right when you make new all time highs. They've been doing a lot of this. They've been making those gingerly and then pulling back from there. So on that note. Let's go to the next slide, which should be here. And I'll let this just sit here, uh, and then I'll move it out of the way. This way, if anyone wants to pause and take a screen capture, they can. But this is going to be the balance or uh, the basics of the meandering discussion we're about to have. A lot of these things are are left and rolled into this week, right, from last week. But some of them, some older ones are gone, and then some new ones have appeared. And that's just the way it is. It's just rolling comments that sometimes still apply depending upon the market regime we find ourselves in. And so sometimes that's persistent and sometimes it isn't, you know, and sometimes new things emerge. So it, uh, it definitely changes over the course of time though. But a lot of it is reminders that I don't want to, I don't want to neglect to mention uh, because you know, they, they, even though they may have applied <clears throat> in a, in a better way, a few weeks back, maybe they still apply. So I'm going to keep this simple. Let's get to where I'll stop at the point where I need to really uh, move into the chart. So I'm going to try to keep this simple. That's we already talked about this. Be careful what what you wish for. Right. So are the bulls now are the bulls now out of anything in the immediate term, right? The near term that can really keep the party going uh, because they got what they wanted. I don't know. I mean, that that I think the answer is did a lot of people overly fade this thing. I think the I think that they did a nice work on gamma to get people to cover on Thursday morning, but after that covering spree ended, it really hasn't been for the last sort of session and a half. It hasn't been all that stellar, um, and it's not a disaster as I said. But I think some of the market breadth stuff we'll see. It's not necessarily good, even though overall on balance, it was pretty good really until today. Um, let's see. So we have to talk about this. This is probably where we have to break it. So let me just stop the share. I will reposition. I'll come back to those points, but I need to have some stuff up here to be able to show you first. So get rid of that. Move this over here. Hopefully that is going to be out of our way and I'll bring the share back up again here. So let me get, let me get this going. Share should be screen four, screen four. All right. So we were on AAI, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the AAII spike and we got that. This is a really significant spike, you know, from one week to another, we were below 40 we're now above 50. So is that an immediate panic? I don't think so, but it is very interesting. And I think it just shows you how quickly uh, things change, why we have to change with them as, to the best of our abilities. And it also shows you that there may be a lot of people that think this is now wonderful. And, you know, we're we're basically contrarians when it comes to this stuff. You know, it's not like we immediately just go into the fight mode. Hey, this thing's overdone on the bullish side in terms of sentiment. Start start buying puts everywhere. Of course, we don't do that. We're waiting for the technicals to further develop. And right, we, that's all a big part of it because fighting against the trend is maybe one of the last things I'd prefer to do. However, this is a little concerning that suddenly they're right back to <clears throat> near 51 and if you look at this is the other interesting thing 
which factors influencing your six month outlook the most you can see it's everyone's fixated on right that big obvious thing that we just dealt with some are fixated on valuations and corporate earnings and then there's other but to me i think it's the other that's which is the minority you know that's that's where this is this stuff is relatively well known um i think or well estimated by the bigger players uh this this stuff down here is i don't think appreciated by enough players so that would be sort of that out of left field risk that i'm talking about that then so if you want to buy my story a little bit which i'm not trying to hard sell by the way but i'm saying it got very overly bullish quickly and these people are focused on the obvious not the not the lesser things that are out there and uh that's the timing of of the end of september into october is not very good because we can show that here uh let's just scroll down a little bit and you can see this is not a recent newsletter not the most recent though but you can see if i put my my hopefully everyone well i want to make sure y'all see that hold on one second is that popping up okay it is yeah you can see here september and you can see what happens here and this is this is not very good right especially as you get into that that sort of that pop in september uh that we may have just gotten again may then after that it's kind of rough stuff into october <clears throat> especially in presidential election years which is what we're in so this conclusion of september into the start of october not a good time typically during a presidential election year so having said that right these people may be quickly um off balance they could be quickly put off balance and um optimism as they note here optimism really leaped so i think we have to give this rather than just a one week spike that we would normally not fret over i think we have to weigh this a little bit more heavily than we normally would right now i hope that makes sense i know i spent some time on that but i hope it makes sense i'm also going to come back to this because this may be one of the keys to unlocking what's next in this market but getting back to my my point so my my argument is the rolling complacency i think it's still there the market breadth, I'd say, in the mega caps, let's go into that. That was a little uninspiring. So if we come to here, it should be there. And I'll try to I'll try to enlarge this a little bit. But you can see that this group of very simple market breadth indicators that I have on this view, there's other ones in other places, but these are the ones we consistently come back to. And you can see that this is actually looking pretty good. But as we close out the week here, it was kind of a sour note finish, right? For a week that saw new all time highs. But at the same time, I can make arguments of, yeah, but you know, as of right now, uh, it's still within a whisker of that, right? So what's the problem? That's one argument I could make. However, another argument I could make, and remember we're looking at the spies at the top, not that it really matters, but just note, look if i put the vertical line there and hopefully everyone can see that notice how great the market breadth looked right there right you might even be able to say that in because of that really kind of moonshot one day that i'm on that was really just just great better than anything right it might be just better than anything i don't know it looks like it's maybe the highest reading we've got in this view that we're on now but everything was looking wonderful and that right was the top right that was that was what preceded this corrective activity that we saw that got everyone sort of rattled in the second half of uh july into aug so i'm not predicting that i'm just saying what we try to do is observe things and take notes of important factors and features and i i wouldn't extrapolate that too much just yet but i do think you have to be on guard when we look at the aaii we look at the calendar and we also look at other things, which let's go into other charts right now, because this this point to me is pretty important. 
Um, and I'll show this on several things. So I might be skipping a bullet or, oh, why did it do that? I might be skipping a bullet or two, but uh, it's really, I think for the best, we'll come back to them anyway. Let me just kind of expand it so everyone can see. But right now, if I just, and I don't want to take away all my drawings, but I think last week I made the argument that we're in an, in an ascending triangle in the SPY. And that's, you know, with, with the incoming trend being bullish, I would expect the outgoing result, the resolution to this consolidation to be up, right? That's my default setting, unless I have really good reasons to believe that's not the case. But this thing did break out. And this is where we have these key flat lines that are nearby. So I think, right, <clears throat> this 566 line was just a little bit above. We could drop it down to 565. But I, I, I probably should have. I might have actually moved it. So this 565-ish line right there in purple, you know, that's where we busted above. We broke through and we were able to hold yesterday and they kind of held it today as well. They were dipping below it, you'll notice. But often what you see when you go through an important new level like this where there was resistance is that you pop, pop, pop through, they immediately pull it back, then they go a little further than there's a, even even more of a retracement back again for a second time. Not always, but sometimes. So this is that initial sort of pullback to it, but it held, right? You don't wanna to read too much into that. Um, it's only one day's worth of action, but it's really hard to make the argument, I think already vociferously that this thing is, is doomed, right? I, I wouldn't say that it's doomed, but I would say, look, if they, given the sour note that we ended on, if this if they start taking this low out and you're seeing sort of news neutral to negative news uh, that's driving the market, um, then, yeah, I think you could easily come back down to the 20 there in late blue or probably more importantly, this line here in purple that I'm going to highlight right there that that's now blue. You know, that's our that's our support line. So I wouldn't be surprised to see them play games with that. If there is a sell off, um, they would probably hold it above the 50. Uh, but they would monkey around with the line and people that are using the line would get wrecked. Meanwhile, it never cracked the 50 and people that don't observe SMAs would be like, why did it stop there? It looked like it was breaking down below my line. Just noticing these things over the course of time. But this is just what happens a lot. Uh, so, as I've always said, uh, since I've been making these videos, but I started a long time before that, these guys are the masters of exceeding something, basically misdirection, right? Getting people to believe that there's a continuation and then rug pulling it, or that there's about to be this sharp sell-off that's about to intensify, or and then bouncing it, saving it from that. This happens right all the time in many different ways in support and resistance uh, key areas. But this is the key level, I think, right now. It's about 565 on SPY. And you're clearly very, very close to that. And you're only about you know half or a little bit more than half of 1% away from the all-time high. Right. So it's very hard to say, oh, we, we, we didn't finish at an all time. high. I'm apocalyptic right now. I, I mean, maybe some people have it that way that are using, let's say, other things or more sophisticated things. <clears throat> but just using the basic tools we try to employ here, I think it's very hard to make that argument. But this is where the butt comes in. This is the big problem for me. I think this is becoming interesting more and more interesting that the Qs could not really do more than this. It's not like they had a horrendous week. Let's not make it overly bad, right? But look at this sort of lackluster performance when they got what they wanted. Um, you would think other than maybe a gamma induced squeeze there on Thursday through our the line we had drawn, right? It wasn't able to close above that line, um, even though we had it in place there, I think, last week. It wasn't able to do that until post-Fed, right? Even the whole day we had to be complete. It couldn't close above there. And they pulled that off, but they weren't able to advance with it. You could see that that 487-ish area, 485, 487, that kind of held it in check. So it wasn't able to go too much beyond this former high here. Now it still does have that that um, I would say more of an more of an ascending triangle. Some would say it's more of a symmetrical triangle. 
I'm not even going to get into those arguments. The point is there's triangles in place no matter how you look at it. And the thing about triangles, which I want to get into, is they're one of my favorite patterns because if you handle the breakout or breakdown properly, which means with discipline, and you're willing to reverse course, right? Because you just care about the chart and the action. You don't have an opinion. You're just trading what you see. These are great because you can, what usually happens, and I'm going to show this on this main chart here, which should be here. You'll see this. I want to show this specifically in NVIDIA because the reason I'm showing it in NVIDIA is because this volatility, the red line here, I might, I know this is hard to see, but vol in NVIDIA is about as low as it's been since, uh, when's that take me back to? In a, in a few months. So it, that's my whole point of showing that, just so I could show that basic IV level. So I don't, sure there's better tools for that, but we want to keep this moving. And the reason why I like these triangles is because this, there's a lot of energy being stored up in here. That's That would be sort of the theoretical way to look at it, right? That this stock had an incredible run. It's consolidating. And it's basically, right, it's it's basically burning off all that, um, all that overdoneness that it had to it. And it's working its way through. And usually, right, again, our, our assumption is, it, default position is basically unless you have good reason not to think it can really break up in the direction of the incoming trend, assume it's going to break up. And so that would be the assumption. And it seems like there's a lot of people that maybe are onto that assumption, people that have already been riding this as bulls for a long time, and they're still sticking with it. And I'm about to show you that. But this to me is, this is very interesting that this stock literally finished down on the week. So here's Friday at 116 and close on the nose. And then there's last Friday, 119.10, right? So you had this really, um, what, I think it was, that is the right day, right? I think, yeah, yeah. So that's a, that's really, you know, that's a rough, you're, you're down a few percent in, I think the most important stock in the market right now, in the most important sector in the market right now, which it often is. And this thing really, think about the market making a new all-time high in terms of SPY and DIA and the big dog of them all, the stock of the moment, right? The As they say, like the, the it girl, uh, that, that stock that everyone's in love with couldn't do anything. And in fact, it lost small for the week. So that's very interesting because if there's a problem here, and uh, which I've said this many times, having been through this, a lot of times there's legitimacy to the hype of, let's say AI in this case, whatever they're peddling, but it's AI right now and what that can do. And there, I do think there's legitimacy to it. I'm not an expert on it, but I'm just saying in general, I think there's, there's certainly a lot of potential with it clearly. And there's just normal first wave of these people. And as we said last year, probably near the lows um, because that's when the topic of conversation came up uh, by, you know, by the hype, you know, the early hype buyers do well. It's when you show up to the hype very late that you get yourself in big trouble. So there was this amazing run. If they start to uncover more SMCI type activity or shenanigans. And, you know, I remember reports that came out about Seagate 20 something years ago, you know, trying to act as if they had this wonderful quarter to keep the stock price buoyed. And I believe they got caught warehousing hard drives and just booking them as sales. That's my recollection. I don't remember exact details on it. I can't even be sure it was Seagate, but that was that's my recollection. But shenanigans do get pulled by people. Um, they do. They play, they play shenanigans and uh, it happens. But this is the big dog. And I think this could be the key to unlocking what happens next, because if this, well, SMH, basically the charts are going to look very similar because of the place in within uh, SMH that NVIDIA occupies or NVIDIA occupies, uh, you know, this is not acting well. And I, I wouldn't say it's over. And like I said, the, the default position on this triangular consolidation should be this thing busts out 
comes back, closes this gap, and we, it's all up and away. But if that's not the case and there's real problems, then there's with, especially with NVIDIA, then there's real problems. And so let me go back to my, uh, my PowerPoint. And so that's the area that I'm looking at. And I will then, let me just minimize this for a moment and bring us back to here. So this is what I wanted to show. There is, you can see this is all recent, right? Since late last week, look at all this, look at all this UOA that's October, November, September. These things, a lot of these things are still active. And you can see that these totals, a lot of the totals of some of these trades are quite large. These players have been coming back to this NVIDIA or NVIDIA well for a very long time. And they have I know that some of these players have done extremely well. And I've put a lot of trades in to UOA Pro based upon their activity. They, they were the catalyst for us getting a new fresh idea in. And if the technicals, which it was in a strong uptrend, so it was hard not to put that trade in, right? Even like pretty much anyone who was, was paying attention would probably have said, this is one that, you know, our, our clients or subscribers should be looking at. Um, it was hard not to do that. So I think overall it, it worked out well, but, and these guys have done well as a result and they're still there. So they're still there. So they're sticking with it. And so I don't know if they'll be right. There's going to probably be a time when these big uh, NVIDIA bulls are not right. There will, there will be a time, but you could see just how much paper has appeared in there. And it's very large when you add it all together. It's, it's just quite a bit. So if they're right and this thing starts to lift, uh, that would be very helpful. I think it would start making everyone feel better about a very important sector. And then I think you get more mega cap participation and you get uh, certainly a SMH participation. And then you're you're maybe off to the races. And and that, you know, it's, it's uh, not like we can rule out. We've been saying in the newsletters that, well, I could show that. But we've been saying we still see there's a, yeah, let's see. Uh, yeah, so we this is the line that I've been leaving in there and just rerunning because it's been accurate for a long time. You know, we still see a great deal of big picture positive potential in the market on the bigger picture charts. But first things first, and that means bull, bulls must hold up well until news gives them another reason to rally. That was, that was, concluding comment was really specific to that particular week when this was published. But this line here uh, is is what I've been rerunning because I, I don't, I still see it that way. You know, we've been saying saying it for a long time. You never know, it'll persist for as long as it have, but it, it has, but it's still, it's still relevant. So there's that. Now, the other thing I want to show while we're here is the uh, coin. So here's coin. Uh, not, oh, geez, come on. My computer's hesitating. You can see that we just got these couple of hits here in coin. Um, this one's, you know, this one's expired, but there's a couple for next week that are not large. Oh, well, it looks like there's someone made of, oh, no, they're, they are slightly different. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought it might have been a dupe for a second. But yeah, these are, these are still, I think, still active. So keep that in mind. Someone appeared in there. That, I told, uh, I put a special note into an update right before I started recording for folks on that one. But we also had this, and we talked about it in our cocktail hour with Pete Nigerian um, at 1 p.m. Eastern time today. And here is the micro strategies. And look at this one. And this is also next week. So somebody seems to be rolling. I, I'm not sure why they rolled up that much. Maybe they are still bullish, but are will not willing to have as much risk on the table um, from where they were. I don't know. Uh, maybe it didn't pop. Um, it didn't pop as quickly as they thought. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure. I, I just, but I do think this looks interesting. The two names, you know, that are crypto related, are seeing paper late, and it's next week's paper, and it's fairly substantial in size. So. You may want to keep that in mind because if you look at this, to me, you know, when I saw it, I I put and looked at some other other charts too. I thought, well, this thing looks like it's 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 really there. 
right? Like it's got that, you can, I feel like it's got that <clears throat> pop potential. If I can get this to can, <clears throat> really quickly, this thing could be above hot, you know, these highs easily. And then that opens up the upside of the range for it. And when these things start to go, they can really go. So I think clearing the middle part of this range, kind of that mid range area that releases it to potentially trade to the upside of that. So I think we have like the 150, 170 call spread. I can't remember. I don't want to misquote it. So just forget I said that, but coin, you know, it's, it's not, as, it's not the same, but it's got this, it's working off of a higher low right here. It's kind of a little stealthy kind of gets thrown into the mix there. Uh, it did kind of pull back small, kept going, worked its way to a higher high versus this. I saw these little nascent signs of an intermediate term trend change, not long term yet. So I'm not really as technically bullish on coin. I just know that coin does have its moments. It has recently gotten smashed to the point where it was very oversold and uh, they're trying to reverse it. And when I looked at it, knowing how it can move, I said, well, you know, this thing could easily move back up to 190. So I think we have a vertical spread on in there because these aren't cheap. And I try to keep the, the ideas on the more reasonable side, dollar wise per contract uh, or per spread for folks. But I do think there's potential there. That would certainly be right. If this can ignite, that would certainly indicate more of a risk on thing. And you would think some of the other things we've looked at would also be looking good. But I just wanted to delve into that because, right, especially the NVIDIA, because that is, I think, this re-energizing or this having problems, disappointing a lot of people, and that's, that, that could turn into spillover. So just be careful. Uh, there's People are expecting something to happen, I think, in the fairly short term there, uh, not necessarily next week, but in the next few weeks, it seems. So just keep an eye on that. Um, now, having said that, um, let's talk about, we talked about a lot of these things. Okay, so what I will show, let's cover the mega cast before I get too far. So we, I think we left off and the thoughts we had were these things look primed to go. That they really, right, if you get a news neutral environment where there's no harmful news, that as a package, they should all really lift. Uh, let's see here. We did have some Apple paper, Microsoft paper, Amazon paper. I think I was able to get ideas in or update on all of them because they were all interesting, especially the Amazon idea was a nice bullish move. I think Microsoft was okay. I don't, re I don't remember. Apple was probably the most disappointing. Uh, now I'm going to do uh, NVIDIA, Netflix, and then I'll put Tesla in there for a good measure. But because I think this is what we were looking at last week. And last week, well, it doesn't see, well, there it does have my lines in there. So I do think it's what we were looking at last week. So we said, right, this was really had this really strong pop, a nice retracement, cooled off, started turning, looked like it was going to try to take a run. If it got through, right, it would, it would follow through more. Just very simple stuff. And uh, it did uh do that and it did sort of come back even today it did to uh come back to the former high and maybe you could call that test to see if what was resistance is really now being converted to support but i think it's a little premature to say that um it you know there's just not enough yet but that did sort of work and the thing that's interesting is they didn't have nvidia along for the ride and some other stocks just didn't didn't really participate so they were able to do this without full participation. So I would say, look, if they do get NVIDIA going, then these mega caps are getting back on track. Um, and that, but notice, right, there was really nothing special happening. Really, Wednesday, uh, you close, I'm sorry. Yeah, even on Wednesday, you closed and you had nothing special happening on the entire week at that point from the prior Friday close to Wednesday's close. And then it was all really this, uh, I think, gamma induced um, move the futures, create a gamma squeeze um, maneuver that they pulled off. And then they spent today, right? You could say consolidating, but they gave some back. So there's definitely more impressive ways to move up than what we saw this week. But 
in the end, it did move up. It did look prime to go, but there was the missing element elements in there. I just don't think you got that across the board participation. So now we, we've looked at the critical stuff. Let's look at IWM and then we can start getting into more of this stuff because I think we've been making the case that this 225-ish level is a big deal. And if it can get through there, right, and these other kind of like just high, the spike high right here, it really could open up towards the all-time high, which is much higher. I think that's a 240, I want to say it was like 245. I can't remember exactly. It's been a long week. Uh, let's see. Yep, 245-ish right there. You know, that's our next, that's the next part of next stop for us. And then through there, We've got this going to about 270 is 280 um, from that point, if it can go. So just worth the reminder, right, that there's a reason why you know we call it resistance. And you can see it really did stop it dead in its tracks. But for this week, you know, what you want to see, I think if you're a bull, and I screwed that up, what you want to see is the base camp. You really want to see a little more weakness on uh, Monday, maybe Tuesday. And then you want to see that, you know, kind of that Tuesday, turn around Tuesday, actually, where late Tuesday, things firm up. And then they come after this stuff, um, you know, late in the week. They come after stocks late in the week because that way, right, you will not have expend, uh, expended so much energy running all the way to resistance. You started out with a base camp that was much lower closer. So when you got there, you were able to push through finally, you know, and maybe take out that 228 and change high, or at least challenge it. And then that would be the start of the lower rate environment that's being anticipated, um, helping these stocks, or at least investors thinking it will and buying them up because they're so interest rate sensitive relative to the more established companies with deeper pockets and better balance sheets and so on and so forth. So Right now, it got short-term overbought, and that's, I think, because it had such a, a long run to get there, relatively speaking, and it got to over 70-something on RSI, probably on the high. Um, not that that means anything. It just it, it got close enough. And now we have to wait and see. So I think this is another, um, you know, what this is, again, whites of their eyes, right? You've got to wait. You've got to get more data here where you can start to formulate something. You, if you want to fade it and just fade it, taking out, you know, it faded taking out Friday's low. Like just that's a continuation of the action. It, maybe you think it's going to drop down to at least the 20 or 50 down in here, maybe even further. Um, and it's been range bound. And I wouldn't say that's the end of the, I mean, that's the worst idea I've ever heard. I'm just not a big, when it comes to gamma flipping, I'm a, I'm a lot bigger on range bound trading. But when it comes to just day trading or short term swing trading, I'd rather find things that are not bound in a range that are really looking like they've got outperformance potential, if that makes sense. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's that. If it gets right back above there, you know, it could be go time. I mean, we don't know what the, the week's going to bring, but, you know, I'm, I'm probably trading below this low on Friday and above Thursday's high as a breakout. That's simple. Those are, you know, that's for me is your, are your levels I would look at um, and just act on them because, I don't think that this this was definitely a sour note. I mean, the diamonds finished higher, but all all the other major index ETFs that we track all finished down. And I think it was a disappointing day in uh, SMH where it was off, you know, over a percent too. It gave gave some back. So not that not that great of a day. It doesn't mean anything. But see, the problem is, I think the last couple of days are a little noisy. They're not really great. They're not really great days to. You didn't have a disaster today. I and mean, yesterday to me was again gamma induced. So I'm not really feeling it like I've got the great beat on it because I don't know if I can trust the action as much as you normally can. Um, now let's take a so there's the wall, and uh you know the you know the deal. I still think the IWM's got a ton of potential, and uh I'm not don't think I'm turning into this true believer permeable. I'm just saying the charts, the big picture charts tell me. It and the other indices still do. And I would not be surprised uh, by a, a, a very sharp pullback um, sometime soon, nor would I be surprised if these guys try to goose this stuff. 
I'm just, that's where I'm at. I've, I've been there for a long time. I've just seen so much that, you know, nothing, it, I shouldn't say nothing, but very few things surprised me compared to the way it used to be for me when I was new to this stuff. XAU, wanted to make a mention to this. This is probably the one that has the, much like IWM, it has big picture potential. If you ask me, um, the reason I'm saying that is that if you look at this, it sort of resembles a cup and handle which is a pattern that, you know, I have a lot of respect for the cup and handle pattern. I do think it's a reliable pattern that delivers the goods once it finally fires. Here's GLD, which has a cleaner cup kind of and handle look to it. And it's, you can see that it did fire and it's been going on and we were luckily, we were paying attention on this one. <clears throat> but uh, so this is, you can't really complain too much about where you are, right? That you're closing near the highs. I did get into GDXJ. I'm still in GDXJ. I've got other things too. I've been long for a long time. Um, the last, I don't know, I would say the last several years I've been long, you know, waiting for this to rise. So I can't complain. It's just that I wish, again, I almost, you almost always wish you bought more. Um, but anyway, this is uh, performing well. I still think there's potential there. Um, the only problem probably at the moment is that there's a lot of games that get played in these things, like, you know, in these ETFs and in just this market in general, the uh, the precious metals complex, as they call it. So you can see the hesitation here right near highs. Um, just, just a lot of manipulation in the space historically. Uh, you can look this up if you want to, and you'll find stories on it. So it can be hard. Would not be shocked at a pullback. The long-term trends are still up in this thing. The funny thing is we have seen a little bit of paper, but I'm a little surprised at how late it's been. In prior times where this thing really was performing, maybe we still have people that are not, not convinced, but we've seen some really heavy sector, like across the sector buying. Haven't seen that much of it, to be honest. You know, might just be, they might have, as usual, they might have frustrated the living hell out of, long side players and they just don't even want to go back to it i'm not laughing if you're part of that or anyone's part of it really i'm just saying that it is one frustrating space at times so that's why i go through this warning but just be careful in there uh do your thing i am in gdxj um i i'm trading um a little bit naked long in some of my contracts but some of them i've got uh I've got uh, diagonals on, and which I'm really liking. I just wish I could adjust more quickly to them because I get so busy with the UOA and other services that sometimes I I just can't get to my own stuff. Uh, that'll be fixed relatively soon in the grand scheme, but it just isn't yet. Um, but yeah, so I'm still thinking there's something there. You have to be careful right now on uh, this high close, potential false breakout above this range that we're in. I'll put a flat line on there just with the cursor. You'll see what I mean. You know, we're above this range. You get the general idea. I'll leave it there. And uh, so, yeah, you got to be careful if you're trading a short term. For me, I'll just use a pullback to buy back my short calls and decide if I want to add more. But uh, until the, as long as the trend stays the way that it is, which it has for a long time at this point. So there's, G there's just a little glimpse at that. Um, yeah, so the reminder, too, on the next line is that Global easing, synchronizing, another Ponzi cycle, pulling out the ki kitchen sink to support with the election looming. I think that's all a given. I mean, that's the plan. Will it, will it happen? I don't know. But I think, yeah, they're going to just go right back to the Ponzi scheme, create money out of thin air, paper over all the problems, make everyone think that, you know, things are as good as they possibly can be. Um, they will hook a lot of Dr. Panglosses will come out of the woodwork. I see them all over. Uh, you know, I see them all over social media and honestly, it's hard to keep my, uh, keep my composure at times when I see that knowing how foobart things really are. You really want to just say like, where are you? And like, please tell me where I can, tra how I can travel to this fantasy land that you're living in. But, um, you know, some people maybe aren't equipped. They just don't pay attention. I, I don't know. It's hard to, hard to understand, but I do think that not just this administration, they all, do not want to see anything bad. They only want to see good when the election's looming and the election is looming. So yeah, I think before there is, a, I mean, I think if that's why I keep saying, I think it's going to take real news to knock this market um, 
off off the rails. It'll be news or developments. So um, that's just that. Now, uh, yeah, so let's take a look at the Q. So we talked about the SPY flatline. Let's talk about the Q flatline because that one is at the top here. Uh, you can see that was right near that four, let's call it 85 to 87, right near the former high. I think we talked about this, but just if we didn't, right, this is what it needs to break through to go. Um, did leave a little gap. They might have closed it today with today's action. That might have been what today was all about, closing this gap really quickly. So they bring more people in um, that are not, they get rid of some people that are going to play it that way and keep more supply around uh, that until it gets it gets taken care of. It got taken care of, they reversed it. It's again, hard to read on a Friday, especially to close things out. But look, they're they're really close to popping this through. If they do, this extends, you know, this extends up towards probably the easily easily get to the gap close, I would think. And then you challenge that, especially if your other indices or in this case major index ETFs are screaming. If the diamonds keep screaming, which they made a new all-time high, and I, they may have closed at a new all-time high. No, they didn't. Okay, I wasn't sure where they were. But yeah, I mean, they they made a new all-time high yesterday. They're there, right? The spiders are there. We, we know that they're only half a percent away. So if those things just keep chugging, probably going to help pull along. Unless there's news, it probably helps pull along the cues, which is a weird thing to say, because the cues have really been the leader for so long. To see them sort of be supplanted by the industrials, utilities, basic materials and all that. That's uh and other things. That's kind of a little different, right, than what we've normally seen, but it is what it is. So those are all the flat lines and diamonds, you know, the I just want to make the point that it's really not a flat line so much, but it just right, you can see where right above my my cursor and those other three candles from earlier this week. That was all dancing near there, you know, and I think that's where there's going to be this sort of flip around. So you push through yesterday and then you come back to it and hold. So for now, it's kind of the same thing where you're coming back to the former high, maybe short term trying to convert it to support. We'll see if they're successful. Just a very common thing that we try to point out so that everyone knows that this happened again. And, you know, you can start incorporating it into your uh, thought process when you're managing your positions uh, for during the you know swing or swing trading or day trading. Uh, so those are the three there. Um, the IWM we covered. You know, TNX is just meandering. There's uh, there's not a lot happening. Wait a minute. What am I getting here? Oh, I'm getting the wrong thing. I was like, let me, let's. I meant to say DXY. I think I might have had a typo, but I wanted to get this done for everybody because I'll, I'll be tied up and there's other things going on. But the DXY was just kind of meandering, right? I'm wondering, and I've got this as a bullet, you know, we, do we crack the 100-ish level? Does that really turn into something where normally the weak dollar is good, but is that a, does that suddenly become a problem instead? So I just want to throw that out there. I am certainly not a dollar, you know, foreign currency expert, but I think you can see that this area is pretty big. And if they drop below there, right? You've been above there for a while. It does invite more selling. And if you break down from this consolidation you've been in now for a few years, you'll get more selling. You're probably plumbing lower levels. You would think, well, that's good, but is it? You know, that would be my question. I, it, it might not be, that could be a problem in, in some ways. And we will see about that, I guess, should it happen. But I just wanted to put that out there as to what could cause problems. This is your TNX, and you can see this is just kind of meandering. It's not all that much different than it was a few weeks ago. So, you, know, you would say, you know, it's you can see it's clearly downtrending, and given what the Fed's apparently planning to do, right? I, I suppose that makes perfect sense. Something that makes perfect sense for a change. Um, what else do we have? Uh, oh, VIX. <laughs> we covered GDXJ already, so I just want to say that I'm going to be doing. My main concern for things, aside from my precious metals stuff that I'm doing, is uh, when it comes to VIX calls, which I bought some of late today, uh, and some other things that I'm doing uh, with downside put butterflies and other types of spreads and things like that. Um, those are more about events occurring, 
things, you know, news impacting, not necessarily um, anything I see in the markets. It's more of a more of a uh, a take on the fact that I just for a lot of reasons just see the next two months as probably being chock full of more risk than uh, is anticipated. I'll be very surprised, very pleasantly surprised if we get through the next two months and we don't have anything um, that's very much out of the ordinary. But in the crazy world we live in these days, that might be harder to do than it used to be uh, because ordinary stretched, I guess, far, far wider than it ever was. But you can see where the VIX ended up. I was really close to pulling the trigger and I thought, you know what, there's probably nine out of 10 times you expect that reflexive squeeze. And then, you know, if that happens, I could get a much better deal on my VIX call. So I'm glad that I waited on those. Just wanted to say, because I know maybe some of you were like, wonder what you did. That's what I did. You know, I just decided to be a little more patient and it paid off. Um, I already talked about the NVIDIA. I still think that the world's awash in many issues. I'm not even going to read the rest of that line. It's been the same for and slight modification just for the last month or so, at least. I still think that's all being missed. Um, I hope to be wrong. Uh, the news hit I already talked about, which is why I'm saying again, I would roll, 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 because you don't know if and when, if there is going to be news, let's just say there is going to be really significant, basically negative news. Um, and, you know, I think like we're, we're getting treated to an assassination per week, you know, not to make light of it, but it's just getting ridiculous where there's assassination news. You know, it seems like there was uh, some claims about a direct energy weapon. These people getting ill at some rally. Uh, that could have been something this week. This is after some, you know, whatever that, whoever that dude was, they picked up uh, Ralph or whatever um, last week or weekend. Uh, and then you have uh, this other situation with uh, somehow, you know, the president or I should say former presidents somewhere nearby and the police decide that's a good day to uh, send out bomb sniffing dogs for training exercises just seems really strange to me. But again, I'm not privy to any information. I'm just saying there's a lot of weird stuff and uh, who knows, you know, if it will always be this, you know, uh, escape, you know, I'm not wishing that on anyone. I just want to be clear. And I take, you know, take assassination very seriously, but you know, at some point, if there's something going on almost on a weekly basis, you know, the odds of you getting something negative from that grow a lot, right? It's not just here, you know, here this one time, it's a series of things that are popping up. So that's the kind of thing I'm talking about, though, to be very, very honest about it. I just think uh, that kind of news uh, is, is monkey wrench news, as are like wars and everything else that could happen. Uh, that's what I mean. Like everyone's like, because there's no breakout of inviting right now. Everyone seems to be not too worried about it, but it could happen at any time and change things dramatically. It, it, it's usually a buy in the long run, but in the short run, it can be painful. Um, you might get a good deal on stocks if you wait and you do get a sell off, but initially that's normally a negative reaction if it's a serious thing. Uh, let's see. So, yeah. So I think factoring in the, um, incoming trend in things. I mean, I think you have to still say, if I look at just the charts, I'm a bull because of the long-term trend still. But my most likely scenario is that I don't think it's as clear because this is not a, this was not a real, I, I, I'm saying that I think it was way more about this gamma induced situation that caused the spike. And uh, with that in being the case, I'm not as impressed by it. Um, not to say that it can't persist. A lot of unimpressive things persist, but I'm just saying it's not this, hey, we got what we wanted. Now we're buying everything. They didn't even come in really, as I said, for NVIDIA. They didn't come in in a big way to really push uh, SMH further. They came in for some things, but not the, the, the very top name of the moment. So that's very interesting to me. I think you have to wait and see. As I said, I think what you're really looking at is Right. You can trade the short term momentum right now. Um, I would say if they start to get above that uh, opening on a 571, 
I would, that's where I would, uh, if they traded above 571, I'm probably thinking they're going to challenge that high. Then I'm getting back in on 571. Down here, you know, you may as just, well, you may as well just wait for this today's low, you know, at 565 ish. You know, hate to, you kind of hate to wait that long sometimes, but that's where you're at. I mean, I think on spies, you're looking at, you know, there's another line that comes into play here. The line is mattered. I'm, it's blue. I'll extend it so you can maybe see it a little bit better. These lines to me, you know, are really no joke. Um, and I, I like to watch how things behave around them. And a lot of times they, it's just strange how they kind of work it back to exactly near the line or just above the line or whatever. But um, that's so that does seem to still have relevancy. Um, not being able to get back above there and close above there convincingly could be a problem for it, right? If they try a little, a little push, uh, open lower, push it back up, hit that line again, and then reverse lower, you know, not a good thing. Just a little sort of intraday hint can develop from those things too. Anyway, so that's that. Um, I do think you're on, you're in, we talked about the levels and other things. I would just, you know, I, I, I think long-term trends are up. They get these things going again. I'd have no problem going that way. If there's no follow through and it's sour starting the week, I'd have no problem saying they probably pull them back because if you look at something like this, you had this sort of extended run off of this support line, which is just above the 100. And the purple line is the one I'm referring to. That took about a week and a half to get up there. And it wouldn't be surprising, even though these were sort of uh, neutralish sort of boring days it wouldn't be surprised to have a little bit more than a one day back off one or two days turn it into maybe two to three and then maybe right you get a little bit more of it and you're you know you lift from a higher level and you are you really have you lifted from say a rising 10 which is right near 560 right now you know then you backed off from the high by two percent came back in found support just about where you should you're in the low 560s and you're on your way again from a higher level rather than launching where we turned around there at 540. So you went up 30 points before you backed off at all, like in a, in a, in a major way, right from that high. So that's what I'm saying. I think you maybe see that, um, that type of scenario. It, it would make the most sense. But remember, sometimes they listen to us. They might've listened to us a little bit this week. They don't always listen to what we think is the best thing for bulls um, to do. Um, yep. Yeah, and I'm leaving the line of, you know, my confidence is just down. Um, and it's for a host of reasons, but you know, the lack of participation from SMH from NVIDIA being a no show spite that, you know, th those were also potentially there to go. They may still, we saw all that paper. Um, but you know, market breadth, the AAII bullishness getting overly toasty quickly. You know, these are reasons why I'm back to let's just mm, I'm probably still, you know, you, you you forced me to say something. I'm probably still saying long term bull for now. But with the calendar coming up and everything the way that it does seasonality wise, we I think it makes sense to be more of a neutral opportunistic trader. That, that's why my most likely scenario is wishy washy. But it's I think it's based off of a rationale, right, that's supported by critical factors so you might disagree but that's why we all we're all traders um but i think yeah i so i think that you're going to need real news to derail this market if, as i said the last couple of weeks if you don't if the market's selling off and you're not sure why that's maybe even worse so keep your eyes open for that if we do get that the unexpected news window is upon us the end of september poor performance in a presidential election year is upon us I still think that people are not really, I think people are living in a fantasy land that are underpricing risk right now. And that's the hard thing about being someone that thinks they see risk. You could be right, but the market does a great job of ignoring it for a long time until it, until it can. And so I hope the risks are unfounded that I see, right? But I still see them. And I, uh, I think, so for that's the, why I see the market as being, sort of complacent, quickly complacent. And I don't like that, um, but that can persist too. That can persist. So we'll see. I'm just not nearly as comfortable as I was the last couple of weeks thinking that, you know, we've got to, we've got to uh, 
more than likely see these guys try to move things things up into Apple's earnings. I'm sorry, Apple's event and uh, the FOMC. Um, that's that was the basis for that. You know, the the uh, we thought they would sort of string their string their moves together on. Um, so there's underappreciated risks. They they always try to sell the soft landing, and most of the time, in my experience and recollection, is that you get a hard landing. I've got the same concluding lines. I would still be at DEFCON one, uh, not because we're at this critical breakdown area, you know, below the 50 day and the spiders or something like that, but just because of the news. So a lot of that's repeat, and then we're going to wrap up the video really on that. Um, as far as sectors go. I'm just going to bring this over and make a mention. Uh, I think the sectors, as I said, I'm going to bring this over and make a mention. The sectors are, man, this is what happens. Sometimes the thinkers swim fighting me. I mean, this this was a little disappointing to me because the way that things sort of finished out, there was a lot of back off. You know, this is one thing I didn't want to fail to mention and almost did. But you can see that you know, we didn't, we didn't, we got this, again, a lot of this is gamma induced, but a lot of things did work, but you've got possible double top in XLF. You've got XLRE, you know, finally rolling over here. Now, is this going to be like, okay, this will really support housing. And I bought all the way until the cut. Now I'm going to rug pull it because everyone else thinks housing is good now because rates are coming down. That, that's what, they, these are the kind of thoughts I just wanted to share. You can see even healthcare, you know, sort of maybe double topping. We don't want to read too much into it yet, but there's there's certain issues here. Um, XLK, you know, over here hesitating. Big spike in XLC, but the last, you know, really Thursday's candle was a bearish candle. It, you know, they they distributed after that opening, and they distributed today, and it was another down another down close. So that doesn't look as good as it did, right? You can see here that you're getting near the prior support. I would argue that you're right near a flat line in XLP. Uh, XLY, I put an idea in on the bear side today because, and I don't want to do this to this chart, but if I drew a trend line under here, there could be a little, at least a very little uh, quick pullback in here, right, to a prior level. Now, this is not a great trader, but somebody did buy some puts in there and I do think there's a little bit of an opportunity for a quick bear trade. We just don't, and I like to keep the log balanced. So as, as much as I can, it's it's impossible, honestly, because usually the you know one either usually we're getting dominated by bullish paper, but a lot at times you do get more of a balance. Um, but really, it's because I want people to have something that they can go to if the market suddenly turns, especially when I'm as concerned about event risk, if you want to call it that, as I am right now, which I'm not normally, by the way. But anyway, this is what I mean. You draw a trend line under here on XTN. This thing started to reverse. That's what I mean by up here. This would be a sharp, the sharpest trend line you can draw that's under the action. Draw it. You know, it's cracks there. Take the trade. Wait and see what happens. Have your, you know, have your position management and risk management plan in place, knowing where you'll you'll cut and run if it doesn't follow through to the downside more. Or if it does, where you'll make your adjustments. Utilities, powerhouse to new highs, right? That's a little bit of a, um, can be defensive, but probably being driven by you know what, right? The demand for electricity. Um, these were still impressive overall, XLB and XLI in terms that they moved up. But you can see like, that's not really a convincing breakout yet. Now they are holding this thing right near the prior high. This is still above, right? Despite today being less than seller, you're still above the prior high. But I mean, there's enough here for me to say, you know, maybe this turns into sell on news. Let's not, you know, let's not go get uber bullish and or just remain kind of more on the bull side. There's nothing wrong, right? If you have these sort of counterbalancing forces, there's absolutely nothing wrong with calling it as you see it, which is what we try to do. And just saying, I'm going to be opportunistic. We'll see what develops. And, you know, maybe this isn't a time where I get loaded to the gills one way or the other because it's a harder read. And I I can tell you that, you know, this is obviously me grading my own my own uh, paper. But I would say that when I'm when I arrive at this sort of more of a neutral balanced arguments to be made on both sides state or status, I think it turns out to be right 
a lot of the time. So I don't know what percentage, but I can just tell you in my career, like when I felt this way, it was better to look, wait, wait for more price action to, to develop before you get too committed is the whole point, right? It doesn't mean you don't trade anything. It just means that, you know, be light with your risk taking until you feel like the market's revealing more about what it wants to do or looks like it's likely to do to you. Then you can start to get pick up on your aggressiveness. That's all. So I hope something I mentioned today helps you out in this upcoming week or some week in the future. Um, I want to thank everyone, as always, for tuning in. I uh, hope you all had a really good week this week. It wasn't an easy week to trade, but uh, there were some opportunities. There were actually some really good ones that finally panned out in UOA for us, which was nice in the UOA Pro Service. Some good runners um, in there. Um, and I do think it's getting, it should be interesting. I mean, I think... Uh, we're in for some pretty solid trading for the last two and a half, well, I should say three and a half months or three months of the year. Um, just maybe that lull around the election if it if it's held as at its normal time. So on that note, I'm going to wrap up. Have a great and safe weekend, and uh, I hope everyone has a great week ahead. Thank you.